So now that we're able to sign up, we want to sign in. Um, and there's a little bit more involved here. We obviously need to authenticate a user, but we're also going to change the navigation as well. And we're going to implement a method on the user model to output the user's name. So before we get going, I'm just going to update this template quickly with a header. So uh, I have my auth controller and roots open, but I'm just going to head over to my auth view for sign up. And I'm just going to add a little H3 up here saying sign up. And you can obviously add whatever else you want in here. So that's just improved that page a little bit. So over on our sign in page, then we obviously don't have any controller methods to handle these. So let's implement these quickly now. So we have a get sign in, much like we had for get sign up. And here we're going to have a post sign in. And as you'll imagine, the get sign in is going to return a view. And this view is going to be auth.sign in. So let's create this file just now. So under our views, create a new file. And we'll go ahead and call this signin.blade.php. And again, you would have had the markup in the course files. So we can just paste this markup in here. In fact, let's pull over our base template first. So let's paste that in there, get rid of all of that content in there. And let's copy over the markup within the course file and just re indent this. We'll go ahead and we'll add an H3 just up here. And we'll say sign in like that. So we now need to modify our roots. So I'm just going to be really lazy and I'm going to copy these, I'm paste these because they're very similar. We're just going to say sign in, change this to get sign in. And we're going to call this auth.signin instead. And we'll do the same for this as well. Now, of course, you can give this any URL you want, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to say post sign in. And again, for the uh, auth controller, we'll kill the page here and say sign in. OK, so now that we've done that, let's go and head over to sign in. We can see our form there. We've got this remember me checkbox as well handy, so we can check this if we do want to be remembered. Um, but we're going to update the navigation quickly so we can click on sign in. So from any page, we can click sign in. So over to our templates, partials and navigator, we know the name of this root, so we can update it here. So we say root auth.sign in. And then we can go ahead and we can click on that if we want. We can move between pages. Perfect. So when I hit sign in now, we get a token mismatch exception again. So we need to include that in our form. Let's just close these off. And um, we can go ahead and add that here. So remember, it's an input type of hidden. The name is underscore token. And the value is session token. So now we should be able to submit this through. And then we get sign in. Great. So although that was signing, uh, submitting through, we still have the action as a hash. That would have just gone to the same page. But it's always good practice to include your full URL in here. So we have auth.signin for that form action. OK, so over on the auth controller, then when we do use post sign in, we have the same request here. So we can just pop that in there. And we do pretty much the same thing. We just need to validate everything. So the validation here is really straightforward. We just want to make sure the email and password are required. There's not really any further validation that we need. So we're going to say this validate request. And then we pass out array of our field, uh, of our names and rules. So the email is required, and the password is required too. And then here again, we'll just say all OK, just so we know that we're working well. So at the moment, then we can hit sign in and nothing happens because uh, the validation has failed. And under our form, then we can do pretty much what we did before with our errors. So under our form group here, we're going to say if errors 
has email. We're going to output a space and then has error. Otherwise, we'll do an empty string. And we'll do the same for our password as well. So if errors has password, we want to output has error, otherwise an empty string. So now that we've done that, we need to do the same thing that we did before, where we looped through any errors, uh, not looped through, we checked if there was an error and then we output the first error. So we can do that here too. So if errors has email, remember we want that span with the class of help hyphen block. And then in here, we can say errors first email. And we can copy and paste this, be a little bit lazy, pop that down there, and just replace that in. So now when we submit, we get these two red and the email and password field are required. Great, so we're not going to be including the values and keeping the values in there if things fail, but you can cha change this however you want. You can even remember the state of the remember me button if you want. I'll leave it up to you to customize this to however you want. So I'm gonna enter my email address and my password. I'm gonna hit sign in and we should get that all okay string, perfect. So now is the job of actually authenticating here rather than dying dumping a message. So to authenticate, we can wrap this pretty much all in an if statement. And we need the auth facade. So I'm just going to import this at the top here. So I'm just going to say use auth. And we say if not, auth attempt. So we're attempting a sign in here. And if this does pass, it will automatically set all the sessions you need. So you don't need to worry about setting them manually. So we're here, we pass in request only. So this is just a method that allows us to pass in two bits of data or m more than two, but in our case, it's just email and password. And once we've done that, you can see we've got this array here uh, or this um, piece of data here, we've got this array in here. And what we can also pass into auth attempt is the remember me state. So what we need to do here is say request has remember. So what that will do is it will check if our remember checkbox here, it has actually been checked, if it has an on value, and the name of that is remember. So it's pretty straightforward. So if that is the case, then we want to return back and say we could not sign you in because remember this is checking for false. So we want to return, redirect, uh, we could we could redirect to root, but we'll just do redirect back with info. So our alert box we created earlier could not sign you in with those details. So otherwise down here, we want to redirect the user to the home page and give them some info that they've been signed in. So we can return redirect to a specific route with some data and that data is going to be in the info key in the session you are now signed in so we'll test this out it won't look like we're signed in when we do successfully sign in uh, but then we can update our navigation to reflect that so i'm going to just enter in alex and i'm going to enter in a wrong password hit sign in and okay so class chatty user not found and i think i know the issue here so what we actually have is under our config. So if you bring up config here and auth, um, this obviously allows you to choose either a database or Eloquent driver for, for authentication. We're using Eloquent. And we have an authentication model here. So what we need to do is change this because at the moment we are using the chatty namespace, but remember we deleted that original user model and we replaced it uh, or recreated it inside of the models directory. So that's the error that we're seeing here, chatty user. That was trying to access chatty user there or the class from that, uh, but we're now in models. So we've gone ahead and done that. Go back to our sign in page. 
let's go ahead and sign in with the incorrect details. So could not sign you in with them details. And I'm now going to go ahead and authenticate with my username and password. My password is just password. I'm going to hit remember me and hit sign in. Okay, so let's see. Redirect to root, missing argument one. Okay, so let's go and check out what we've done here. Ah, okay, of course. We didn't enter home on there. So let's go onto the sign in page and just go ahead and do that again. Okay, so we are successfully signed in, but the templates that you would have downloaded, uh, if we go over to our navigator, you can see here that although I'm co I've commented these out, these are still being rendered by Blade. So this will still be outputting PHP. So what we can actually do now is we can uncomment these. Commenting them without HTML is, is useless. So I'm going to get rid of this actually, and I'm going to keep that username in there, this just hard-coded username. We'll change this in a moment. So now what this is going to do then, we can get rid of these comments as well. So make sure these are uncommented. And we'll just go through through this very quickly. So if the user is authenticated, we want to show links like timeline, friends. We want to show the search form so they can go ahead and actually search for a user on the site. And then down here on the right navigation bar, this is all bootstrap markup and styles, obviously. We're checking if the user signed in. If they are, we're showing their username. We're asking them or giving them the option to update their profile. And we're also giving them the ability to sign out, which we'll be looking at next. Otherwise, we're saying, well, you can sign up or sign in. So let's save this, make sure it's in this state. Let's go and refresh now. And you can see that we get the navigation that reflects a signed in user. And let's quickly implement this get full name or username method that we saw in the template, but we didn't actually implement on our user model. So I'm going to head over to our user model. So remember inside of app models user, and let's go ahead and implement this now. So we're actually going to have three methods here, just in case you want to choose between them, use them individually, or just have the flexibility there. So the first one is going to be a function called get name. This will get the user's full name. Otherwise it will return null. So we have a quick check in here. This is going to check this first name. So our first name column and this last name. So if they are both available, we know that we have a full name. So we can return this first name, a space, and then this last name. So that's going to get, get our first name. So now we are going to implement um, a check for our first name. So we're going to say, well, otherwise, if this isn't returned, this is the next check. So we're going to say if first name return this first name. Now, otherwise, as a last resort, we're going to return null. And now we're going to implement a method to get the user's full name or first name or their username. So this is really straightforward because a lot of the checking is done here already. We're going to say get name or username. And this is going to return this get name, which is the method that we've just created. Or if that isn't available, it's going to return this username. Pretty straightforward. And we could also go and we could implement a method like get first name or username. So we wanted to address them in an email or something like that. Or we just wanted to informally address them somewhere and not output their full name. We can have get first name or username. And all this will do is it will return this first name and if that doesn't exist so if it's a null value we're going to output their username because we know that always will exist so what we can now do is using get get name or username you, you can even use get first name or username but I'm going to do the full one in the navigation we can now replace this Dale placeholder with that so we can say auth user which is our user model now and we can use that method so this for me will just show Alex 
but if I were to update my first and last name, which we'll be looking at later when we work on update profile, then that will show my full name. But of course you can change that and just show the user's username if you wanted to. So we are now successfully signed in. We have our remember token stored. If you hit inspect element, go over to resources and cookies and over to the domain you're working on, you'll see that we've got that remember token in there as well, as well as our Laravel session. So that is signing in, not entirely straightforward, but really pretty easy to do. So next we're going to be looking at being able to sign out.